as I said before, it was convenient political adoption, and and then obviously it, it had to become um, convenient drug and alcohol agency adoption in order to survive, or mm -hmm. not to survive, but to squash out the opposition. I mean, the last thing anyone wanted was a whole bunch of independent peer-led organisations uh, having lots of successful uh, recovery outcomes and, 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 and the government bypassing the providers as, as they stood and said, oh, well, you, we, you know, you, you lot are useless at your job. We better give all the money to the, you know, to, to the peer movement. And so the way to do that is to, to, to suck up the peer movement, call yourself the recovery movement and provide it. And, and at one level, all of that's really good. I don't want to belittle some of that process. It's very important inside treatment that we have lots of peer mentors, people with lived experience, but not at the expense of, and, 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 and particularly the, the Westminster government, they encouraged that. Um, you know, over the same period or a little bit before and where we've arrived at now, um, when I first got involved in, in drug and alcohol work in, in the UK, there was a myriad, and I mean an absolute myriad, of lots of local, what we would call third sector organisations. They weren't even regional, uh, you know, they were literally local, oh, you know, you'd have, yeah. tiny, you'd have things called like the Westminster Drug Product Project, and it only dealt in Westminster, or, yes, I remember so, that. so you'd have the Barnsley this, or you'd, you'd come across the Oxford that, and so on and so forth, they, they, you know, and over a 20 year period, we end up with um, Phoenix, Ad Action, um, and, and then these organisations, in order to keep sweeping up the money, then remove the drugs from their title. So we've got these crazy organizational names at the moment, like Change, Grow, Live, and We Are With You. And, 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 and the whole point in relabeling yourself that is, it not only allows you to then, as a, as a corporate identity, hoover up drug and alcohol money, but you start to hoover up mental health money, you, you hoover up um, job and employment support money, you hoover up housing money. Um, you change the articles and conditions or the memorandum or your legal status of an organization to allow you to trade in a bigger circle. And that's all about feeding a corporate identity. It's actually got nothing to do with the individuals under, underneath. Yes. yes. The, one that, the one that did my head in, I think, was the first one I saw was when someone decided to rebrand something, calling itself, we are with you. Um, <laughs> you know, when you're such an integral part of the system. No, you're not. You're probably as much of a problem as you are the solution. And it was a bit cheeky, really. God knows what um, some of the, um, you know, indigenous populations must think of when, you know, they, they use those expression, you know, nothing without us. And then you've got these massive corporate organisations got the cheek to say, we, you know, use the word, the we word in the same word. You know, it's like, anyway. Yeah. You could get a lot of political ranting from me if you really wanted. <laughs> uh, we, we, we see it in Australia with the indigenous, uh, with Aboriginal communities here. The white fellas come in, know nothing what they're doing. They hoover up all the money. They go in and destroy what's happening at grassroots there and walk away. And uh, it's very common here. It's very sad. Uh, we shouldn't underplay the fact that that period, 2008, 2012, a lot of us were filled with massive massive political optimism and mm. we were really and we really enjoyed getting together and networking so extensively across the UK it's left some really strong legacies but it no longer looks like it did then you know 10 12 years ago